anyway, it takes months and months and months for them to figure out how to come up with a plan, basically. And I guess it comes down to it. Is she's frustrated him to every level. She's left. She says he's, she, she, she puts it in your mind like, oh, look how he's behaving. He's so different now. He's this and that and this and that. Well, Charles is upset because she just tried to destroy his life. Um, she told him she, you know, she, he was out of town when she found out and he was, uh, in another state. And when she flew back home, she took, she took his truck and hid it, took all the keys and took them from him, oh. uh, emptied out all his clothes in the house. I mean, try to destroy his work, his oh life. Oh goodness. And I was like, Hey, do you think that's a bit extreme? Like, are you sure you're supposed to do that? She goes, Melanie, the spirits tell me exactly what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I'd say, you know? And so anyway, she, um, she tells him, which is stupid. She says, <gasps> I'm going to destroy you. She's like, you are not Charles anymore. You are Ned. I forgot his last name. Snyder. You're Ned Snyder. And you're not going to, you're, you are, you know, I am, she told him, I think she told him prior to this, but she was translated. She was married tomorrow night before. Oh my and gosh. Already felt, so yeah, she's already telling him this stuff, which is not oh smart. My goodness. And yeah, not smart. She should have kept that information to herself. So he, he gets me to come over to his house he breaks into the house and she's picking up the kids. She's still, he's still the ski. It's a lot of drama in that. But anyway, he, um, he says to me, and I thought it was Lori, but he had her cell phone. So he was trying to get me to come <gasps> over. So, to to him, so it freaked me out. <sighs> and I get there and it's him. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I talked to him and he's like, you know, Melanie, Lori's crazy. Like she thinks that I'm this guy named Ned and that she's trying to destroy my life. And I'm like, uh, uh. I just don't know what to say. Oh, my goodness. Just, like, freaking out. Yeah, because I think my friends are good. She's seen Jesus. You know, I'm really believing that she really saw these things, you know? Right. And I'm just gullible as gullible gets. And she stuck on me like Velcro. She was such a good friend to me. You know what I mean? Like, she was close to me. Right. And um, so I just stood there and didn't know what to say to him. And then he hugged me, and he was crying. And oh I was like, now look, I look back now and go, oh, my gosh. Anyway. So basically she sets it up where he's, well, he sets it up. He's going to come into town, you know, when he, he passes away and, um, they have a shoot down, you know, and he dies and had a self-defense, but the police officer told me that it was not self, you know, the guy that Alex that shot him, he didn't even really get hit that hard in the head. So, and you know, Alex, bless his heart, who passed away, he just was thought he was doing a favor to his sister. He didn't really care so much you know about charles or this or that but he just thought he was helping her did she ask him to kill him well to self-defense yes well he she because he they, they planned it i mean like he was so she knew that charles was coming to town and then she invited alex over that night to spend the night to protect her oh she said they're going to kill her she told me they're going to come and try to kill her oh my goodness I said, well, why? I said well why are they trying we're going to try to kill you and she says, well, because I have a $3 million policy on my head and my brother and my husband and my nephew are all zombies now and they all want me dead. Oh, and they my were... goodness. Oh, yeah. It gets crazy. <sighs> so anyway, they have the shoot down and everything. And uh, she grabs his phone and they fight over that. And then T Tylee, her daughter, picks up the bat and tries to defend herself or hit him or whatever. She doesn't like him anyway. And um, she doesn't like anybody. And so, um, anyway, they shoot him. And so I've talked to the police officer. He goes, you know, she was really happy for somebody that just had her husband shot dead. You know, she was like, oh, how are you? Da, da, da. She's real positive and upbeat. And I was like, oh, that's not normal behavior to somebody that gets blown away in your front room. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, that would traumatize me. But anyway, um, so she, she's told to move up to Rexburg. The Lord tells her, move up to Rexburg now. She takes Tylee and JJ with her. Tylee and JJ are up there. I know she's up there with both of them because I can hear them on the phone in the background while she's packing and moving in. And then she t then she tells me, I don't know, within a week or two that Tylee is now at BYU. He's up there. She's up there at school. Huh. So, I go, so I go up to visit her, and um, I see that Tylee is not there. And I, I said, hey, you know, Tylee's I, – I, you know, I mentioned again, like, Tylee went to BYU. And she goes, yeah, but she gave me this really creepy look. Ooh. yeah it was creepy it was like yes she's dead really and you Ooh. know that kind of look yeah like, I think, yeah almost that kind of look but then i didn't know what to think about it at the time i was like um oh 
oh, why is, do I, do I feel creepy when she looks at me like that, you know? Yeah. And so anyway, um, then she tells me I get there in September 23rd weekend and JJ's missing. No, JJ's not missing. Sorry. JJ's there. And she tells me he's a zombie now. Oh my goodness. And so was Tylee. Oh no. So, yeah. So people that are zombies, they don't end up staying alive. But you probably see the right. pattern. Right. And so <sighs> anyway, so I say, okay, um, she says, I'm just going to give them back to Kay, the grandmother. And I said, well, that sounds like a good idea. Then you guys can move on with your missions. Just, you know, just tell her to take Kay. You think she'll take JJ? I mean, he's a lot of work. Do you think she'll take, you know, no, yeah, I'm hoping so. I'll just have to make something up. I said, well, you know, tell her you're sick or something and that you just have some illness and that you're not able to watch after. So, you know, she's a, he's a handful. And so, and plus it's not her kid anyway, right? And so. It's not her kid because she adopted him, right? Right, she adopted him from Kay's family. Oh, she did? And, and, yeah, Oh. as a baby. She, okay. she had him as a baby. Yeah, he was a drug baby, and so she oh. they adopted him as a baby. Yeah. Oh, wow. And she was a really good mom to him. She was. She was really She was really patient with him and very loving. She, I saw her. She's very loving to him. Wow. And, um, yeah, she was hands down. She was a great mom, patient, very patient with that kid. Wow. And so, um, anyway, um so she says, she told me, she's like, yeah, JJ is at grandma's house. Uh, yeah, she went, so after I left, and I saw JJ right before I left, and she said within a week or so, you know, that he had gone to Kay's house, and, and that, you know, that's he, that's where he was. So then Tammy da- dies, and then I, and then she's in Hawaii when it happens, and I call her in Hawaii, and I say, hey, guess what? She, you know, Tammy just died. Do you know this? And she goes, no, I haven't heard it yet. And Oh and I said, well, what happened? What happened to Tammy? And she goes, well, she was a zombie two weeks before she died. <gasps> and I was like, really? She goes, yeah, she was starting to question our relationship. She was wondering if he was having an affair. I said, oh. And so, she, and I said, well, what, how did she die? She goes, well, we just had to do what we could to take her out of her spirit. Something <gasps> like that. Uh-huh. And I was like, um, that okay i'm thinking she said a prayer and her spirit went home that's what i'm thinking right and so like maybe she did some kind of like blessing or something you know like they people can do that i guess i don't know and um so anyway um then this is where it all changes for me this was hard you're gonna just just try not to react okay okay no it's okay put your your seatbelt on okay and um so then i get a call from chad two days before thanksgiving Hey, Melanie, Rexburg Police is going to call you. Don't answer. And I went, what? And my stomach just dropped, you know? Oh, man. And I said, what happened? Well, the police are over at JJ, uh, that, uh, at uh, Lori's house, and they're looking for JJ. And she told them that JJ was with you. And I went, what? Oh, no. And I'm like, whoa, I thought JJ was at grandma's house. He's not there, is he? And they're like, he's like, no, he's not. I'm like, what? And I don't know. Honestly, I did not know what to think at this time. I was so shocked. Mm-hmm. And, and just like my whole spirit was like, what happened? I was freaking out inside. And uh, then I get a phone call from the police. Of course, I ignore it. And then... Um, Lori calls me and she's like, "Oh no, everything's fine. I just told the police I'm with you and that you're gonna take them down to Arizona." And I'm like, "Uh, what, why? Like, what happened?" And she's like, "Well, JJ was, you know, we thought that JJ was going to get kidnapped by Kay, and so we're protecting him, and which is a lie, and um, which I believe is a lie, personally." Right. And uh, I'm like, "Okay," and she's like, "Well, I gotta go," and. I was just didn't know what to say. I was just so dumbfounded by it all. And um, anyway, so I go down to Arizona, and um, her brother's down there, um, just down the street from me, because he's marrying my friend who's in my ward. Her name's Sulema. And so I say, hey, are you around? And so anyway, we had, I said, hey, let's meet. We need to talk. So I said, hey, Alex. I said, do I want to know what happened to JJ? And she, he says, uh, no, you don't want to know. I went, what? Oh, my goodness. And she goes, I told Lori she should have never got you involved in this. I'm like, yeah, she should have never got me involved. That was not smart. And um, 
And then she said, he said, yeah, the police ransacked my house, took my guns. And I'm like, I don't wonder why they did that. Couldn't figure that out at the time. And um, I just figured they kept telling me that, you know, they had a lot of bad people working for them. That, that now the cops are zombies, you know, oh that kind of stuff. Oh, my goodness. And so anyway, so I'm starting to get like really creepy feelings. And then so anyway, one of my friends, anyway, he was with me, he goes home. And he calls me up, and I'm like, um, he's like, Melanie, I'm really worried about your testimony. I'm like, what? Why are you worried about my testimony? And I'm like, okay, okay, I need you to be a friend. Let's talk. Let's talk. I said, okay, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about the zombie thing. What do you think? And he knew what was going on and stuff. And I said, I'm just, I don't have a testimony of it. Like, I'm, I'm not sure what to think about all this stuff. And he goes, oh, my gosh, me too. He goes, I just never have a testimony of Chad and Lori. And so all of a sudden this heaviness that was on him was leaving him. Just the heaviness of just, he'd been trying to pray about if they were really who they were. Yeah. And he was not getting a, He was not getting an answer about it. And anyway, the heaviness leaves them. And uh, it's David Warwick. You know who he is, right? I don't. He was the guy that was speaking at Dreams and Visions when you were watching. Didn't you watch the recording? I did. I did, yeah. Yeah, he was the one that was speaking, the guy with the brown hair. Okay. And, He's speaking about his visions. Anyway, yeah. him and I are dating. But um, Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's such a sweetheart. Oh, good. You'd really, you'd really like him. But anyway, he was, he's was he been questioning all of this because he's really had amazing visions. And he's like, this is really not comfortable for me, Melanie. Like, this is really jacked up. And um, anyway, we talked till 5 o'clock in the morning. Wow. And, and I was, like, coming to Jesus, and I was feeling the, the, the stomach, you know, that, that deep pit stomach feeling yes. you get when things are wrong? Yep. I was feeling it gut, gut instinct oh. was going, something's wrong, something's wrong. So I call Sulema, and I'm like, hey, Sulema, like, what did, what did Alex say? I'm getting a bad feeling. I'm not sure what to think about this. And she goes, well, I, you know, I don't, she'll tell me what her testimony was of Chad and how he got, a, gave her a blessing, made her also part of the 144,000 and said she was translated to, and then said, oh um, she basically started having visions after this. Okay. Yeah. So she had a testimony of Chad that he was a real visionary. Oh and so, God. and I, anyway, so I said, well, what did Alex tell you? What happened? And she said, well, he, all he said to me was, um, you don't want to know. No, no. She, he said, you're, they won't be able to be found. He won't be able to be found. Oh and I'm like, goodness. Uh, that? I said, you know what? I'm not really feeling good about this, Selena. And she had just married him. Like, she had just married him. And because, you know, that Chad and Laura were like, get married. Hurry, you're part of the 145,000. You need to get married. Huh. My brother Alex, you need to marry him. And so they got married quickly. And, um, and so, anyway, it was not good. And, um, so I said, I'm going to have to call the police. Like, I'm feeling really bad about this, you know? Right. And my gut is screaming at me. And I'm hoping Heavenly Father's, you know, pleased with me right now. Right. And, uh, so anyway, they, um, so I, I go fly up to see David because now I'm starting to feel insecure about how safety I'm feeling at the time because I know he's up the street, Alex is, and I'm starting to feel uncomfortable with the idea of now I'm going to report him to the police and he can go to jail. Right. And so I just leave town and go up to Dave, and Dave just ministers to me like the whole week. I mean, he is there for me. And I am like heavy with energy, super heavy. And, um, I tell the police, I said, I'd like to talk to you. And he goes, well, you know, when you get back to town, I'd like to talk to you. And so called up the Rexford, please. Now, do you live in Rexburg? Hello? Melanie? Melanie, are you there? Hello? Melanie? Hey, Melanie, are you okay? Hello? Hear me? Yes, now I can. Oh, sorry. 
sorry, I, I don't know where I left off. I noticed that my phone clicked over. Oh, you, you um, said that you uh, called the Rexbridge police. Oh, okay, sorry. You were wondering where okay. I went. Okay, so I got to back up. I was speaking a whole bunch. Um, so, we call, yeah, so I called them, and then um, they said they'd talk to me later when I got back in town in Gilbert. So I decided to call Lori and Chad, and I recorded it. And I said, um, hey, why did you tell the Rexford police that JJ was me when he was not with me? And she says, well, I just did that for your safety. I didn't want you to know where he was so that you would be safe. And, you know, because, you know, just the situation's really uncomfortable and that, you know, we're trying to take JJ and da 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 And I'm like, well, you told me he was going to Kay's house. And yeah, well, we did that for your safety. And I said, you know what? I believe that you and Chad are being deceived. And I said, you're a core whore. Exactly. And, I, and they said, well, you call me a core whore? And I said, yeah, this is like a core whore. And, and I said, um, this is like a core whore. And, you know, carnal desires. That's why I did it, because of the carnal desires. And I said, she goes, you, you're saying I did this because of carnal desires? I said, yes, you and me know both, hun, that you are very carnal. Because <laughs> she has a very high libido, so I know she's carnal. Oh, boy. And, um, yeah. And so, and I said, you know, the scriptures say that the Lord said in, in Doctrine and Covenant section three that if you would have followed him, he would have he would have protected you against all the fiery darts. I said, if you guys would have been obedient, you would have been protected from all the fiery darts. The Lord does not work in darkness. Exactly. I said, the Lord would have had your back. And I said, well, no. And she's like, well, she, she compared herself to ether that hid in a rock, Alma that fled. And Moroni, at the end of his life, fled. She compared herself to, to them. Oh, I said, um, okay. I said, they were prophets. And she's like, exactly. You know, I'm like, oh, boy. And she was not happy. With I said, you are resting the scriptures. You know I read the scriptures. You think I'm resting them? I said, you are resting them. You know what that means, right? Right. Yeah. And I was like, and you are. That's what you're doing. And I said, I am concerned. She goes, you know how much I love you. And I said, I am concerned for your soul and your salvation. Amen. Yeah, and I did not hold back. It was like a, it was like a twenty minute conversation. Wow. I, I recorded it and I sent it to the police, and I was like, you just know, for my record, I didn't have the kid. You know what I mean? But right. um, and she's, but her goal was is that she thought that the that a big earthquake was going to happen every month last year. <laughs> Oh and she was told by Moroni that it was going to happen, and so therefore it didn't matter what happened to anybody or everything because life was just going to change. It's going to oh be fine. Goodness. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, um, anyway, so the police, um, you know, I've talked to them, and they're basically, you know, Chad is like texting people and calling people still. Oh my so. Goodness. Yeah, they can track him and stuff. So they oh. just a matter of getting evidence on him, I guess now. But. Um, Good. Yeah, and so I hope that I don't have to go and testify, hoping that that won't happen. Um, but anyway, um, so what have I learned? I've learned so many things. Um, this is one thing that I've learned. I started thinking about the scripture from James where he talked about, pay, you know. I lost you again. Melanie, I lost you again. Hello? Hello? I lost you again. Hello, Melanie? Melanie, I lost you again. Sorry. Hi. The yeah. Cut yeah. <laughs> yeah I leave off? Oh, uh, the scripture. When you start to say you thinking of the scripture. Oh yeah. So the scripture that says um, for James, he wants for nothing. You know, perfect patient has for perfect work. Yes. Wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. Yes. So the problem is, is that when we want something and we want something and we want something, um, there's a counterfeit that comes along. Joseph Smith wanted to give him the to please right. Harris. He gave him the plate. So he got in trouble too. He got in trouble as well. Right. And um, the Lord is trying to teach us is that we can't please our fellow man. We have to quit pleasing our fellow man and, and quit God first. And so I started thinking about Dr. Bradley Nelson. Do you know who he is? 
the guy that does the motion code, he started it. I don't like him, but go ahead. Yes, well, good. Because I do not like think him. About this. Think about this. Dr. Bradley Nelson wanted to heal 10 years, I believe he said, in a conference that I happened to be at. Yes. He was like, 10 years I went to the Lord. I want to heal. I want to heal. I want to heal. Oh, and the Lord my finally, goodness. finally waited. Well, so this is where the Lord comes in. He's like, oh, here comes the counterfeit. Right. And, and they opened the door to the doctrines of devils. Yep. Yeah. Amen and to that. Oh, my happened. goodness. Uh -huh. So this is how they come in. So all this energy work. Now, I used to kind of be a fan a little bit. Right. I never 100% felt good about it, but I kind of wanted to believe in it. Right. And um, I came to the conclusion from all my experiences that those things are to be taught and shared by the Holy Ghost. And that these people are opening dark doors. Oh, Even wow. though they think they're light, it's bringing in darkness. And hey. Absolutely. Oh, shit. Hold on just a minute, hon. Sure. My son's here. Hey, babe, <laughs> what's up? I love you, sweetheart. Have fun. Make some good. Make. I hope it goes well for you, babe. Okay. So um, I started really thinking about how this was affecting many people. Julie Rowe got really out of control. Yeah. And. And then he didn't even like her at the end. He was like, didn't like her. So anyway, she's now put a podcast out about him and Lori. And it's most, <gasps> it's most disgusting. Oh, it is disgusting. No. She's angry. She even says she's angry on it. And she not only says he's angry, she's like, no, Chad and me are friends. He's been with friends for a long time. And I, I know that I, you know, the, the, my angels have told me that the kids are safe and they're playing on the beach and everything's fine. Oh, my gosh. She's not going to look good when they show up dead. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, exactly. She's out of control. Her, 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 her aura was gone. Oh. And I was like this. And I was like this. My stupid earphones off. I keep going back to my earphone mode. Like oh my, my Bluetooth is picking oh them up. Goodness. Anyway, so there so we're like a prideful group of preppers, you know that? Oh, like yeah. we're so prideful. Like we think, well, if everybody doesn't know what we know, then they're asleep and they're they're just look at them. They're and so we just judge, judge, and judge. Right. And I'm like, Oh, that doesn't sound like very Christ like. Uh -uh. <laughs> Nope. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, yeah, it's, so it's been a little disturbing for me to see this movement um, go on. And here, I'm just going to put the headphones on so they'll quit changing over. <laughs> I want to close the door. They left the front door open. Well, can, and what? Can I ask you, do you, are you ever been afraid for your safety since you were so close to, what if they decide you're yeah. a zombie? Yeah, well, I'm not any, um, I'm not distracting from their mission being together. Their whole thing is they want to be together. Oh, okay, good. So I, I'm not stopping them from being together, so they don't have any reason to popping me off. Good. I mean, of course, I've asked the Lord to protect me, right? Yes. Yeah. And the Lord says, well, if you keep my commandments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's pretty good. He's yeah. pretty good. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, I've learned that, that we're we're very prideful people, and we need to be... We need to be repenting of just believing in anything, and and just really, we need to get back to the, the basics. And I am, I tell you this, hey baby, I am so done with groups, done. Oh, absolutely, me too. So, me too. Done, done, and this has taught me to just, you know, have the, you know, keep my change of heart and focus on beautiful things and help my family and keep the commandments and do call and follow me and keep it simple. And if you want to get revelation. You don't have any business seeking for your second comforter when you don't even know how to get along with people. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and, and Mike Stroud is apostate. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, he is. Yep. Why, has he turned against the church? No, but he's oh, um, been ordaining people to the 144,000 oh, when he has no. had an altar in his house. Mm -hmm. He's had what himself? Altar in his house. What is that? I, didn't, I don't understand what that is. An altar. An altar? You know. Oh, altar, no. Like He's got an temple. altar in his house? Yep. That's oh. what I heard. Oh, yeah. you know, I stopped listening to his podcast, too. I've stopped all I of that. Too. I, I did, too. I'm just listening to the prophet and the apostles, and that's yep. it. Yep. Nobody else. Yep. 
So, you know, please don't share this on social media. No, no, I promise I would not. Oh, my gosh. It's just just for safety reasons. But, you know, it's just so sad. It's just, it's so sad. You can know how sickened I've been by this. So sickened. Oh, my goodness. The first two months, I was like, I couldn't eat for the first three days. First three days, I just couldn't even eat. I was so, like, disturbed greatly. And I've been in touch with Melanie, her niece that got kind of got involved. And um, I've been trying to call her and help her. And she's just really jacked up. Like, she lost her kids. She got divorced. Oh, um, no. And, and she's up in Rexburg alone. Everybody else <sighs> abandoned her. I mean, oh, it was, that, it's so sad. Yeah, it's so sad. <sighs> yeah, it's really sad. So did they exhume? I know they exhumed his wife's body. Did they find out it was foul play with her, too? Uh, I don't know that mm. information yet. Okay. Yeah, you know, he didn't tell me. Mm. I try not. I try not to ask. I mean, I'm not a super nosy person, so I try not to ask him too many questions right. that might be uncomfortable. But um, I could have asked. I should have, but I didn't. Um, mm. But I just told him. I said, you know, that he's talking to like people on the phone every day, right? Like, you know, he's oh talking to most people in LDS about. He goes, oh yeah, we're very aware of it. So. Wow. Yeah. So well, he's around. If he's calling people, he's around. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't leave the country or anything, right? They could have gone to Hawaii. Hawaii, oh, brother, yeah. Because she loves Hawaii, so they could be in Hawaii. Wow. Did yeah. the police know yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, first off, and foremost, nobody gets revelation through somebody else. Anybody that's ordaining anybody, exactly. anything, that's baloney. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know you're way off base if you're letting somebody say that you're... Uh, Oh, my gosh. That just makes me want to vomit. I know. It's sad. You know, everybody, you know, Chad was such a nice guy. (sighs) And he did have a hard time looking people in the eyes, though. That's, oh, that's a big telltale. Isn't Uh it? Huge. Oof. Uh Yeah, I can't look somebody in the eyes. There's a reason. Yep. They don't want us, they don't want you to see what's in you and in them. Oh, man. Uh Uh Wow. Uh Wow. So I, I yep. felt like the adversaries always tried I know. to, yeah, always had to in with me, always tried to, I know, you know, but I, I've learned from it. It's, it's, if you, man, you, somebody needs to write a book about this, not specifically specifics, but to let people know they're all, they, uh-huh. they're all so deceived, man. They're all deceived. Yeah. Yeah. So much deception. Oh, and it's so easy to be taken out, to taken off. Mm-hmm. That's why. Oh yeah, because yeah, you're trusting. They usually go after people that are very trusting. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The because up. yeah, because like, if we just stick, they think that the basics is so boring. But that's the safety mm-hmm. is in the basics. It is. It is. And All the Lord this. Will teach you himself. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I. Mm-hmm. I've. I've learned how to understand and and get knowledge for myself, and I thought. It is the most neatest thing in the world to start being able to receive knowledge for myself. And and I thought, you know, uh-huh. Mike Stroud was trying so bad to, just to force feed people with spiritualism. Yeah. And yeah. I thought it was really cool at first. 
until he's excommunicated. I thought, uh, wow, and, and he's like, you know, the general authorities don't know why they don't talk about these things and all this stuff. I know why. Look at what happens. This that is just like, uh -huh. oh, man. I know, I know. It's so much. I've been telling people, as I've been sharing a lot with my friends and telling them they've been shocked, you know, because they know Chad. A lot of them know Chad personally, and and uh, I said, you know, and, and Mike Strauss, he's pride. It's just prideful. It's all prideful. We want, we want, we want. I said, exactly. And that's when the adversary comes after us. Mm -hmm. So we have to be so careful. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Lord is teaching me like all about pride through all of this and how just to just just anyway i did have a dream that warned me about deceptions and it was a lion chasing me in my dreams wow. and i came to understand it through other people so my my weakness is that i love and ha so i because i have such a love for people and i want to help people it's my nature um I help people too much. I get to the point where I'd leave the tree of life to partake of the fruit, and I'd leave it and go try to get people to come back to the tree of life. And that's where my sin is, is I'm leaving the tree of life to go help people that are off and down the ditches, you know? Right. And Lehi never left the tree. Exactly. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. So the Lord gave me this cool, cool dream about this lion coming after me, and... Every time it was going to eat me, and I'd always wake up with screaming. Well, I didn't scream in the, you know, when I woke up, but I was, right. I'd go, ah, and then I'd wake up. So I started to figure out it was about helping people. And so it's a long story how I figured that out, but I know it's true. And um, when this last portion happened where I cut my friends off and just said, you, you can't be a part of my life anymore, right. just by the way I handled them, right. I had a dream that night about the lions again. This time the dream, the lion came after me. Instead of screaming and turning around, I turned and I said, just believe in him. Just believe in him. Just believe in him. And then I see Jesus Christ. And he oh. is standing there. And I walk towards him. And then he goes to the cave. And then I walk through the, through the cave to where he was. And then he goes to the exit where the door is. And it opens up and it's light coming out of it. Just oh. white light. And I wake up. And I go, oh, my gosh. I can't. This. Oh, my gosh. I finally believed in jesus christ enough to, to cut these people off of my life and this is what the dream was about well mm. time goes by and i'm now realizing i am in the cave now he was showing me the future wow. of this cave now and this is a cave but the good news is, is there's light at the end of the tunnel or Absolutely. the end of the cave Absolutely. Yeah. And so I'm like, I can't believe he showed me already that. And it was, but the thing that troubles me or um, quite, like, I don't understand is he, I let, he led me through the cave. Like I followed him. Right. I followed him into the cave. Wow. He didn't follow me. I followed him. I'm wow. like, did you want me to go through that wow. to help other people? Like, Oh, what? absolutely. Melanie. No doubt. Absolutely. Oh, As everything we go through is, is yeah. everything go, turns for good. Everything is yeah. turned for good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe so you will help people. I think, I bet you'll write another book because you will be able to help people because there's going to be, yeah. people are so this people are just, I mean, they're going to be deceived in droves, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, it's goodness. bad. And so it's getting so bad. And I've told everybody no more groups. Right. No more groups. No Absolutely. more groups. And I, all my friends, I, I'm telling you, everybody that I talk to are like, oh, my gosh, I feel so sick. I need to repent. Everybody's repenting. Wow. Everybody's, everybody's repenting. That's good. It's so beautiful. That's it's good. so beautiful. Oh, that's so good. And I was like, well, at least I went through this. To, because they would have never repented had it not got to this level. Right. Right. If, if, they, if there was no deaths involved and, you know, right. didn't get crazy like this, nobody would have ever known. Right. It, it, it leads to bad things. Right. And so, you know, in a way, Chad and Lori were a small, they were a blessing to many people to help them see how jacked up this is and how off they are. And I hope that Julie wrote at some point will come to the conclusion that she's off. Um I would love to talk to her. I have friends that know her personally, but I don't feel inclined to talk to her at all. Right. Um, just don't feel that. She's no. very strong-willed. And to another strong person like me, being a female, I don't think she'd like me very much. You right, know? right. And so, um, anyway, I'm good friends with one of her really close friends. And him and I are close friends, but I haven't talked to her since she, he's been really involved with her. I've kind of cut ties with him because he tells her everything. So oh, I didn't right. want him to yeah. know what's going on in my life. Yeah, so anyway... Um, I've been humbled. I've been broken down. I mean, holy cow. 
just just not been fun and but anyway I feel peace now the Lord I did get I did receive a blessing from a man who's a good man here locally good. his wife is amazing and his children are just a beautiful family and oh, he's good. a really good man and I just said hey I need a blessing I've got some heavy stuff going on in my life I said I don't have time to talk to you about it because you got a kid that's sick right now and I can't you know I right. just didn't have a chance to talk right. and he gave me a blessing and he said he didn't even know what was going on he said the Lord is telling you to go back to your core beliefs. I was like, oh, interesting. Perfect, yeah. And he said, there were people that are going to be criticizing you, but you should not listen to them. You need to turn the cheek and go forward. Absolutely. And he, yeah, and he said, do not take a, you need to take a step back, and you need to heal, rest, and take care of your family. And... Um, you need to go read Moroni, I mean, First Vision. And, you know, I read the whole Joseph Smith history in the temple. And you know what Joseph Smith did? He said there was a great excitement in the land, and he did not engage in the great excitement. He decided to go to the Lord and ask the Lord himself. Oh, isn't that neat? See, I've never put, mm -hmm. I've never put that two into, I know that, but I've never I know, put, that's either. fantastic. It's fantastic. He oh, did not get goodness. carried away with the excitement. He yes. decided to go to the Lord himself. I'm wow. like, way to go, Joseph. You were true to us, Joseph. You exactly. Were true. Oh, my goodness. You were true. I'm so thankful a for A little boy. Truth. Such a young little boy. Know, and he knew. Old kid. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, that's so I fantastic. Know. It's beautiful. Wow. It's so beautiful. Yeah, so, the, so anyway, the guy finished the blessing, and he goes, you know, I'm so sorry, and it's not me. I just, I'm so sorry, but I feel like the Lord was chastening you. And I said, yes, he has been. You're right. No, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, you're fine. Just, I know it's, you're right. I, yeah, I got, he goes, the Lord is very aware of the situation. I said, oh, yeah, he's very aware. Oh, that's so good. He was so in tune, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. He was so in tune with what the Spirit was saying, whispering to him. He's a visionary man, too. Oh, So, wow. so interesting. That is yeah. so neat. So neat. Wow. So now you're, you're dating David, you said. Yeah. And that's uh -huh. so wonderful. That's Oh, it is. I've, oh. I've, I've had a hard marriage for 25 years, and the Lord told me last year, you can leave now. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? I was so excited. I couldn't help but be joyful. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I've been in prison for 25 years. Oh, it's been man. horrible. And I was like, you know, I wrote the book, and I did the change, and I did all that, and there was no change in him. Like, I was like, come on. They don't change. Oh. <laughs> They don't change, or do they change when you have a change of heart? No, they don't, Melanie. They don't necessarily change. A change is about you. It's not about anybody else. I'm like, oh. <laughs> anyway, that was hard, but, you know, I feel so happy and relieved not to be in that relationship anymore. I can't even tell you. I'm so glad. Oh, my Yeah, it's, it's a tender mercy. It surely it is. is a tender mercy. It is. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But, no, I'm good. I'm doing good, and David is amazing, and... You know, him and I are super compatible, and we oh, both are die-hard missionaries. We're both overzealous. That's our problem. Mm -hmm. That's what we get. You know what? So we figured this out. If you're overzealous, then you go too much beyond the mark right. um, and too excited about things of God. And then he was teaching us to bridle your passions. Oh, yes. And I'm like, oh, we are so not bridling our passions when we get so excited about things. And the Lord was trying to teach us, you need to bridle your passion so that you will have love for your fellow man. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, didn't get the, I didn't get that memo. Yeah, I just always, <laughs> I just always ignored that one. Yeah, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so just remember when you really want something bad to make sure it's what the Lord wants. Yeah, and yes. just don't listen to people anymore that tell you about the future unless you know like it's a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation or something like that but, right right you know um even then you know it's you gotta get your own revelation absolutely and i'm done i threw chad's books away i just chucked them in the garbage can yeah i never bought any of them so oh good yeah 
I, you know, I said to the police officer, I said, you know, for being a visionary, ma'am, he sure didn't see this coming, did he? <laughs> he goes, he goes, no, you're right, he didn't see this coming. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I. I read, too, that he was excommunicated from the church, too, that he said he was a prophet and he was excommunicated from the church. Is that true? I don't know about that. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I don't wow. Know. That was along with Could all be. the police stuff that said that he yeah. was... Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I tried to talk to his bishop, oh. and um, but he just moved wards when he married Lori, so he moved so quickly oh, my that goodness. the bishop never met him. Yeah, he never oh. met him. So... Wow. It's sad. I don't think the kids are alive. It's sad. Uh, well, if, the, if they're not, then they're they're okay. You know what I mean? The Lord's the Lord's the Savior them. took I mean, them. Yes, He took them up because, like, uh, the little children that were sacrificed, the Savior's right there taking them. He's right there. Oh, yeah, He's I do right do believe that. Yeah. I do believe that. So they will. They're they're okay. Yeah. They're okay. Yeah. They are. It's just, it's just sad, you know. And it, I think, well, the next is. life, they got, some, they got repenting to do. Oh, true. And yeah. they got to make it right. They yeah. got to, they got to get everybody to forgive them on the other side of the veil. Oh, it is so hard. And every, yeah. It is hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you end a life. I mean, that's like, they didn't get a chance to live here, no. and that takes their, their mortal probation, and it, it lessens it, and that's why it's so serious, you know. Exactly. here to learn and uh, and I think of like The, yeah.
right? <laughs> That's the miracle of the atonement. It's real. It is. It I, is oh. so real. The love. Yes. Away. Yes. It takes it all away. That, that love, you cannot get that love from yourself. It comes from him. Exactly. Exactly. And the and ability. It is and he. Beautiful. Yes, because he gives us the power to forgive. We don't have that power in us. We can't do it. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I love your book. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> That is so good. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Oh. 